Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to give just a moment here and give people a little bit of time to get on this live broadcast. Um, I'll repeat it again, but tonight is the uh, New Year's Eve night. Of 2020. This is our last day. 2020, and our church did not have a what's night service tonight due to the high spike of the coronavirus at this time. Plus, it is it's really uh, rainy hard and uh, heavy outside and and it's cold. I didn't want our people getting out in this, catching a, a cold or anything. And plus the movement and activity with the uh, danger of, of the coronavirus, I just felt like it would be safe to stay in. However, we will have our regular Sunday morning Bible study and breakfast at 9.30 and our regular uh, service at 11.30 this, this coming week. Sunday, which I'm looking forward to since we missed <clears throat> service last Sunday. Anyway, I'm just, uh, I'm giving it a few minutes here so that people can log in and uh, get on our service with us or our broadcast. I don't want to take, I'm not going to try, I'm trying, I'm trying not to take a long time tonight because I realize some of you may have uh, plans for the evening. Uh, Sister Smith is going to make black-eyed peas tomorrow. <laughs> that There's an old tradition in black-eyed peas. They say if you make them you know, on the first day of the year and eat black-eyed peas, well, you'll have a good fortune for the future, future year. And she said <laughs> that she didn't make it last year and we didn't eat it. And she said, look at what kind of year 2020 has been. I'm not going another year without having black eyed peas on, the, on January the 1st. Of course, she was just joking because we're not superstitious in that way. But anyway, we are going to have black eyed peas. And I'm glad for the tradition because I love black eyed peas. So... Way any of y'all not going to have black eyed peas tomorrow? Well, you might want to consider it. You know, at least I get them once a year. If I if I can't get them any more often, that's kind of like Thanksgiving. You know, or when you have turkey and dressing and giblet gravy and you know, if we're not careful, that's the only time, only day out of the year we're going to get that. <laughs> y'all could make. Now I like. I like a good roasted hen as well as I do turkey, but but as far as dressing, giblet gravy and and uh, all the fixings, pecan pie and, and uh, pumpkin pie, uh, wow, y'all can make that any time of the year you want to for me as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I'll get off of that. Um, I want to say just a few words to you. Number one, I want to I want to wish all of you a, a happy New Year. It's coming up midnight tonight, and um, you know, I know that right now we're going through this pandemic, and and uh, with all of this, you know, staying spacing and staying in, wearing masks and being careful. Uh, I know we're all getting war somewhat by it and getting tired of it, but, um, you know, I don't think we ought to dwell on on uh, the negative side of it. I've had people, even of late, talk to me a little bit. I was talking to a minister recently, and uh, I've had people ask me and say, Brother Smith, you know, how are we ever going to, come to see our vision um, come to pass 
in the body of Christ. You know, it just they would be bring up divisions, you know, and things that we're we're not together on doctrinal wise and otherwise other things, order and different things. Uh, I've even you know heard somebody even mentioning recently about you know trying to loosen up maybe on things for um, uh, the changes in our society. Let me tell you something: the changes in our societies right now is not something to loosen up and embrace. Our society is going backwards on spiritual things and it, you're just talking about becoming more worldly and making more room for the world. Um, I don't, I'm not a, you know, my hobby horse I, has never been, uh, you know, uh, what I would call um, a legal position on, on dress and Oh, I think we are to all be moderate. I think we are to look, are to act and look like God's children. But I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a. That's not my hobby horse. But on the other hand, I'm not, I'm not for taking the world. Every Pentecostal group that has opened their doors to the world have lost the spirit of God out of their midst, and we need to be careful about that. Um. I want to do uh, uh, what I did want to say uh, uh, about uh, not being negative. I want you to re I want you to hold in your uh, mind and in your faith what our vision is for, and that is for the greatest move of God in the end of the Gentile world that we have ever seen, that Gentiles has ever seen, a restored church, a church like the early church. And uh, I want to remind you that this body is together on many things. We're together on one body, not, not a divided body of people, but one body in unity in a restored condition that you read about in the New Testament. We... Uh, we have very similar beliefs on the Godhead, on eternal judgment, uh, on uh, overcoming sin, the, the difference in the bride of Christ, Babylon, what it is. I'm mentioning these are things that all of this ministry emphatically know and understand to be the truth, the resurrection. If, you're, if you don't make the bride of Christ, it will take a resurrection to finish the work of God and to overcome the Adamic spirit. And we certainly believe in inheriting everlasting life. So we have so much to be thankful for and so much to rejoice over and so much to hold our faith to, not to let ourselves you know, Paul, how do he say it? Lift up your holy hands. Strengthen your feeble knees. You know, lift up your head and rejoice. Uh, we have much to rejoice about. And in uh, always, in the end of a year like we're in right now, uh, I always have to consider and think about God's institution of the three main feasts, the Feast of Passover, the Feast of uh, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Primarily right now, the Feast of Tabernacles is the one that we ought to uh, look at and think about and, and how to apply what God was doing to Israel back there uh, in, the, in the seventh month at the end of the harvest year, uh, God gave them a feast of, it was called the Feast of Tents. It was called Sukkah in Israel. That's the, the Hebrew word Sukkah, which means booths or tents. Uh, and they were to spend seven days 
uh, in that feast, uh, celebrating the the uh, harvest of that year. In other words, they were Israel had two calendars. They had an agricultural calendar, which was the basically the Roman calendar. Uh, well, at the time of the early church, and um, uh, then they had their religious calendar that started on Passover. So this religious feast was in the seventh month of the religious calendar, which was about equal to our October. Um, so could it, depending on how the months fell, the end of September or October. Excuse me. Um, and uh, again, they were to they were to have a feast for seven days and they were to stay in tents for those seven days. Um, I might read to you in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. I'll start in the 39th verse. It says, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land and you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days on the first day, shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And you shall take you on the first day and the boughs and goodly trees, branches of palm trees and boughs of thick trees and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days, and you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. And it shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites shall born uh, shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. So, uh, uh, that was an instilled feast for them. And of course, you you heard the scripture, they were to rejoice for seven days for the natural uh, provisions that God had made for them. Um, you know, we, we ought to, number one, we ought to rejoice this time of year where to we are to reflect back on the year and be thankful and rejoice for God's natural provision for us, his children, how God has provided for us. We're, we're blessed of God, but more so than the natural, we need to always reflect and rejoice on God's provision spiritually for us, what God has done for us in a spiritual way. Um, it was, uh, you know, when Jesus came to the world in, um, in John the seventh chapter, let me, uh, let me, let me mention this. Uh, during this feast uh, in Israel, after they came into the promised land and temple was built, built the priest were to gather uh, a pitcher of water from the pool of Siloam and pour it out on the altar inside the temple. And that pouring out of the water on the altar as a, a, a drink offering expressed their hope for future rains for to produce an abundant harvest. But uh, it, it's deeper than that. The, the indication of it was that there was to be a, a pouring out of the spirit. That's what water is a picture of. And Jesus in the seventh chapter of uh, uh, the book of St. John, uh, I believe it's on the last day of the feast, 
of Tabernacles. If you go back and look in the first chapter of John, you'll see it was the Feast of Tabernacles that Jesus went to that feast and he stood up and he, in John 37, he said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whosoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water shall flow from within them. And he said in verse 38, thus spake he of the Holy Ghost, for it had not yet been given. In other words, that feast, you see, it projected something. The apostle Paul saw Christ in all of that old of those Old Testament scriptures. And we should see uh, what is seen in those scriptures and what they what those, what those script, uh, scriptures were for, what those feasts pointed to. Jesus, he was the, the gift of life, the spirit of life. Jesus came that you and I could be born again and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and that he could tabernacle with us. You remember when Jesus told his disciples in the seventh chapter, of the book of, I mean, the 14th chapter of the book of St. John, when he said, uh, he, was, he was telling them he was leaving, but he was going to leave them with a comforter. And he said, the comforter is the Holy Ghost. Well, in that chapter, he told them, he, speaking of the Holy Ghost, has been with you, but he shall be in you. And then he went on to say, and that day, me and my father will come and dwell with or dwell in you that he would tabernacle or or you know uh he we this wouldn't be a natural tabernacle but he also you remember paul said you are the temple of god and so god is is has tabernacled with us in the baptism of the holy ghost and this time of year we are to always there should be a rejoicing. We should stop and and uh, 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 consider God's working in our lives this year. He's kept us for another year. He's given us another year of opportunity and serving him and receiving things from him. Not just the natural things. Those things are really automatic if you serve God. Uh, remember, Jesus said, give no thought of tomorrow. Uh, he said "He said that uh, no thought for tomorrow because uh, God will provide for you. He, How much more are you? He, he mentioned the lilies of the field. Um, he, he said, how much more are we? You know, being God's children, his elect, he's elected us, he's chosen us, and there ought to be a rejoicing. Praise God, saints, tonight I rejoice that God has gave me another year, and, and there's been many precious things that God has, uh, I believe, worked on in my life, give me an opportunity, and continuing to overcome uh, the things in this life that would, uh, that's corruption, that would, you know, corrupt our soul, but God gives us the strength to rise above and to live above those things. Um, let me, um, not only, let me, let me, let me try to reflect on a couple things. One of the things was, and uh, that was celebrated in Israel during the Feast of Tabernacles was the illumination of the temple. They um, they had a, uh, there was a per certain portion of the temple called the Court of Women. And in that court, there was uh, what they called menorahs or candelabras that were I've read where they were up, I mean, they were like 75 feet high and they were lit and it lit up the night showing that, uh, you know, 
uh, it reminded them of Jesus being uh, how he uh, he lit up the night. Uh, he was a pillar of fire to them at night. And uh, God gave them light when darkness was everywhere else in the world. It, and that light not only gave them light to see, but it gave them light. It gave them heat. It was cold at night in the wilderness. And they had fire by night and, and a cloud by day. That The cloud by day protected them from the heat of the sun, which is a picture, you know, that right now God is protecting us from severe judgment. He's counting us worthy while God's letting us journey through this wilderness that we're preparing ourselves to enter the promised land or a restored church. So many beautiful pictures in the Bible, but God is, uh, he's helping us. And Jesus said in the eighth chapter of St. John, the 12th verse, he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And so he was the he was light unto man. And um, so that's another application of the Feast of Tabernacles that we could look to. Israel uh, considered uh, that, that, you know, the coming of the Messiah would bring light uh, of God's glory, a picture of the Shekinah glory of God that they were led by uh, in the wilderness. Uh, so anyway, that's another picture, but we, we carry that picture further in seeing the fulfillment of it that was in Christ. And then not only in the early church, but what's taking place in our life that God has gave us. Saints, do you realize how blessed you are that God has revealed to you such a precious plan of his purpose that many, many people are blinded and do not see what you and I have been granted uh, in this body? to see and what vision God has gave us. And so uh, this week is just, it's, you know, I mean, starting today, tomorrow, looking forward to a new, a new year. Uh, and that's what the Feast of Tabernacles was. That was starting of a new year. They, they, uh, they had finished a year, God's provision for them both, naturally and spiritually. And they were fixing to enter a new year they, their, for natural, their natural agriculture year was also included where they plowed up their fields. In my mind, I see the apostle Paul at the end of the Jewish world, uh, the early church falling away, the apostle Paul plowing up those fields and sowing wheat uh, for the early rains of the fall. That's uh, the fall rains in Israel. Their early rains were fall rains because their agricultural year started in October. And the rains would fall, the wheat would grow, and, and it never would come to a harvest, but it would provide uh, some, some food for their cattle down through the winter. And then, of course, it wouldn't be until spring before the latter rains of the spring rains in Israel would take place. And then the barley harvest would take place, which would bring about the Passover feast and then the wheat harvest, the Pente feast of Pentecost. And so uh, here, the beginning of the new year is to start. We've got good things to look for, but uh, we are not only reflecting on the past year, but we're stopping and worshiping God in a reflection this year. Uh, in, uh, in the end of this year, looking 
uh, thanking God for everything, but also in uh, worshiping him, prayerfully uh, requesting the Lord to bring us into this new year to do his will, to lead us and to guide us and to provide for us. Uh, we're just like the children of Israel in the wilderness. We don't have anything, any source other than Jesus Christ to look to, to provide for us. We don't have any hope in the things of this world. Our only source of life is God in Christ. And therefore, I think we should start every year prayerfully in a time of worship. I think, you know, it was to be the first day of it and the last day of it was to be a Sabbath day, a holy day, uh, meaning that, you know, this is a time of, of uh, looking to the Lord. It's a time of worshiping him. It's a time of I don't want to enter a new year without God, without my mind on him and without my desires for his will in my life this year to come. I don't know everything that this year holds. I know what my faith, uh, and my faith shows me uh, that God is doing right now. And I want to follow the Lord and I want to follow him in this new year, but I don't know everything this is a walk of faith. I don't know everything God's going to do, but I will tell you this. He will provide. Uh, we used to have an old sister. I wish I could remember her name. Sister, uh, oh, uh, oh, I'm just, my, her name is on the tip of my tongue. Back in Fort Worth Day, uh, she used to sing a little chorus, God will provide. And it's true, the Lord, he will provide for his children. He will take care of you. I had an old pastor uh, in San Antonio, Texas, before I met the body of Christ, that used to sing that chorus, uh, God will provide. Uh, It was, of course, he sung to us a lot of times, at, at, sometimes at the closing of a service. He was a precious brother and uh, loved the Lord and was definitely called of God. And he used to sing us that chorus quite often at the close of the, a Sunday service. Uh, God, he, if you're looking to him and you're not looking for provisions in this world, but he's your source, praise God. He will provide for you in this year coming up. Look, we've come through a difficult year, but God has provided. We've even we've lost some dear friends, but God's work will go on. Uh, some of those things we just have to accept. God's wisdom, His ways are higher than our ways, and some things we just won't understand till we get there. And uh, I'm sure God will, I'm sure we'll look at things and, and in a much different way and appreciate God's wisdom and all. But he has, he has brought us to where we're at today. We're still here and we've got another year ahead of us. And uh, I want to be one that's faithful for God's people and for the purpose of God and the work of God, uh, especially this restoration of the church. I want to be faithful to God and do his will. Um, anyway, I I didn't want to just, you know, take a tremendous amount of time tonight, but I did want to, since I couldn't be with our church family and then those that are uh, also... Uh, that are, you know, maybe part of our church family, family away from home are those that have another sister assembly of ours, but they're maybe on with us. Anyway, I just wanted to wish you, since I couldn't be with you personally, I wanted to wish you a, a happy new year. I wanted to encourage you. I want you to know 
that God, he is very much, he's not only alive, but he is very much in control of everything. And God's will, God's will, it will be and is being done. God's in control of everything. And, and uh, you know, there is God times and seasons in the Lord. Uh, the Lord, you know, one of the things that uh, I've learned is time. If you'll let time work, God's time. I'm not talking about man's time, but I'm talking about God's time. If you'll let God's time work, if you'll learn to be patient and wait on the Lord uh, and let the Lord bring about his purpose and uh, his will for each one of our lives individually, as well as individual churches. Did you know individual churches, God, our churches are, are like individuals. Our churches, God's doing different things in different churches. We're not to compare ourselves with our with ourselves. Our, God's working in our assemblies what's needed for our assembly at the time and what we're going through. Others may not be going through, but uh, what they're going through is necessary at the time for them and what we're going through is necessary at the time for us. And we have to learn to stop and wait on God and say, Lord, what are you saying to us? You remember that one of the things in the body of Christ that we've always done is watch the Spirit. Watch the Spirit of God. What is the Spirit of the Lord saying to the church? I'm talking about our church. What's God saying to the body overall is one thing. What is he saying to the church, our local church, is uh, it should fit within what he's saying to the overall body, but he may be doing something in our church in particular that's different from other churches. Then what is God saying to you and I as an individual? See, God, he may be working on something in my life that he's not working on everybody else. Sometimes I I go to church, and if we're not careful, someone will try to lead our service with particularly what they're going through as an individual. And that might be all right if that's what God ordains for that service. But if that's not what God wants for that service, we can't let that, you know, uh, get take us into a direction that God's not leading that service. That's why we have to be mindful of the Spirit. Come together, get our minds girded up, and let the Spirit of God and we have to do that in our individual lives also. Anyway, let's all look forward to a new year in the Lord. I'm not looking for something bad. The world may have something bad. Remember when, when, when Elijah was up on the Mount Horeb and uh, the rock, the winds began to blow and the rocks began to blow against the mountain and break. The Bible said God wasn't in the rocks. Well, if you've got any know-how whatsoever about God, you know the wind did just blow and God wasn't in it. God is in control of everything. What that means is God wasn't in that wind that was coming against the mountain, not for Moses. That's a picture. Moses was up in in a cave in the top of Mount Horeb. And that's a picture of the body of Jesus Christ. Now, let me tell you something, saints. Wind's going to blow. It's blowing right now. Wind's blowing from all directions. The winds of, of civil powers, the winds of religious powers, the rin, winds of economical power, the winds of... Uh, 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 what I say, civil uh, military powers also. All these winds are blowing in the world right now, and it is breaking up things. Our world is, is, uh, is, is not able to sta be stable as it has been in the past. 
because of corruption. And uh, so many things are happening, but it's not for you, not you people of God. It's not for you and I. We're in the cave in the top of Mount Horeb. And then uh, you, you say, well, will it affect? Yeah, it'll affect. It'll affect. It'll, it may even have an effect on us, but not in a way that it's going to destroy us or be destructive like it is uh, damaging the mountain. And then an earthquake, the shakings. There's, there, we're not through yet. There's shakings coming. And, uh, but it's God wasn't in the earthquake, not for Elijah. Elijah is a picture of the ministry from the early church, even to today. We're still in the type of Elijah. And so the type of Elisha is after the Gentile world. And when God grafts the Jews back in and there be a Jewish ministry that the bride in Christ will work with, down through the thousand years, but right now we're still in the type of Elijah. And fire finally is going to come, and that's judgment. But that wasn't, God wasn't in the judgment, not for Elijah. God's going to judge this world. Yes, there's a judgment for the people of God, and judgment first must begin at the house of God, but not the judgment that's on the world. You're not of this world. The world's judgment is not for you. There, there is a judgment for the people of God, a righteous judgment. See, God's, God's wrath will be poured out on the world. That's, that scripture, those scriptures I'm talking about is wrath. God's wrath that will be poured out in this world, on the world, and it will touch all phases of religion, but God's judgment, uh, it, it, you know, there will be judgment in the body of Jesus Christ. God will judge everything that's, that is not of God that's in the body of Christ. Everything that's in the body of Christ, you know, is not, but those, those that are just and righteous. See, there's elements in here Jesus said this. He said, um, how did he say? Uh, not the word of iniquity, heresy. He said, heresy must come, but woe be unto them by whom it comes. So see, uh, God will have to judge things out of this body. And he has done that. He will do it. He is doing it. He's going to continue to do it. But if we'll live a righteous and just live by faith and a just, righteous life will be safe in the hands of God. And God will, he will take care of you and I, and we will be under the shadow of his protection. Uh, oh, Brother Greg Green's on here. He said, we're eating black-eyed peas every day, all year. <laughs> oh, praise God. That's great. We, I'm going to get some myself. Uh, tomorrow, Sister Smith, she she got them. She she said, "I'm not having another year without eating black eyed peas on January the first. An old tradition, you know, that black eyed peas is uh, is a sign of good fortune if you eat them on January the first. Anyway, saints of God, I love you all. Grandma Sug, yes, it was Grandma Sug, Gene Suggs. Uh, I don't know if that, I believe that was his mother." could have been his grandmother, but I think it was his mother uh, that sung that song, God Will Take Care of You. First time I heard her sing it was in a home service in Kerrville, Texas. I used to have home services in Kerrville. And uh, so uh, we never did have a building there, but we did have a little group of people there. And, and uh, we had some Wonderful times there before God moved us to Ballinger and then to Winters. We started the church there and then God moved us to Midland and Odessa, Texas. And then finally, finally uh, to Springfield, Missouri and Republic. And then here we are in Little Rock, Arkansas. I never will forget one of the brothers said, Brother Smith, your people followed you all over the world. <laughs> I said, well, 
you know, and God did that. I didn't do that. But uh, anyway, it's been a wonderful journey. But it's just like these people on the that was led across the wilderness. I, I'm still spiritually sleeping in tents and waiting on the Lord because I know he's leading me and you to the promised land. He's leading us to a restored church. Don't get your eyes on things that are not, uh, that are negative, that the body of Christ, you know, may not be together on or problems that you, you know, there's always, as long as there's flesh, there's going to be problems. But you got to get your eyes on Jesus. You got to be like Noah's Ark, you know, he was in the third story. There wasn't but one window and that window was up. There wasn't one one place to look, and that was up towards God. And keep your keep your head up. Don't look down. Don't be down and feeble. But keep looking up. Keep looking to the Lord. He won't fail you. I can promise you that. He'll never leave you, and and he'll never fail you. He'll stick closer to you than a brother if you just have faith in him. He may not do everything the way you like it done, but I'll promise you, you will eventually, you'll, the peace of God out of all that God works in your life will, will cover you and it will develop you into God's righteousness. Praise your wonderful name. Well, it's good to good to talk to all of you. I want to tell you how much I appreciate you this last year. Uh, I just, you know, the people, I love the word of God and I love the people of God. Do me a favor tonight before you go to bed. Stop and reflect on this past year and not on the negative things but re reflect on the fact that God has provided for you. If you, you know, sometimes we get to think, feel sorry for ourselves, but if you just look around, you'll find out there's many people a lot worse shape than you are in. And people that don't have God's love, God's comfort, God's peace, we're highly blessed saints. Reflect on what God's done for you. Rejoice and then pray, be prayerfully looking in faith for God in this next year to come of what he has for his people. I will guarantee you this, the best is yet to come. God bless your hearts. Um, happy New Year's Eve, and just for a few hours in the future, I'll go ahead and say Happy New Year's to you. God bless you. I love all of you. I appreciate you. Pray for me, and I'll pray for you. God bless and good night.